I'm Josh from Vacuums RS and Sewing 2 in Arvada and Boulder, Colorado, and today we're going to talk about replacing the brush roller micro switch on a shark vacuum. This video is applicable to you if you have a shark vacuum and the brush roller is not spinning. A lot of people are going to assume that their belt is broken. That is actually rarely the case. Usually the belt is not broken and there's other electrical issues. So I'm going to show you how to open it up, how to test the micro switch. This is realistically one of the only feasible repairs for sharks because a micro switch is only like 10 bucks or so around there. Um, and uh, it's, it's actually doable. Uh, I'm gonna take the upper body off this machine depending on, your, uh, depending on your model. It may be, it may be different. One thing I will forewarn you, what we're working on here today is a, a shark that has a singular brush roll. Some of the newer sharks, they frequently call them duos. They have two brush rolls, one after the other. Those are an order of magnitude harder to work on these. And personally, if somebody brought one into my store, uh, we would probably quote about $150 in labor because of how difficult it is, how time consuming it is, and the likelihood that something will get broken in the process. So if you have a single brush roll, this video is gonna be applicable. If you have a double brush roll and you're a glutton for punishment, I mean, you can watch the video and kind of figure it out. So this particular shark has Phillips head screws on it. That is not typical. Most sharks have, uh, people typically refer to them as a star-shaped screw. They are uh, what, we, what we call security bits. Um, they're not a regular screw. They're used because shark does not want their products to be repaired. They want them to be disposed of so they can sell you new products. That is their business model. But you can get those bits, do a search for security bits. You can usually get a set of the full range of bits. It's anywhere between five to 10 different sizes for like 12 to 15 bucks. You'll need that for most sharks. This one, <clears throat> I'm gonna start popping screws out. Again, a micro switch failing is actually the most common reason at this point that shark brush roller stops spinning. What the micro switch does is it detects if the shark is in a reclined position. So when you put your shark in an upright position, your brush stops spinning. When you recline your shark, the brush will stop spinning again. So now I've taken out a bunch of screws, but I'm not done. These two front wheels right here, there's actually screws hidden underneath of those. Those are pressure fit in. You can pop them out with a screwdriver. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna pull some of this hair off of the off of the shaft there. That piece of felt is there intentionally. I'm gonna leave that on. The theory behind that piece of felt is it will prevent hair from building up as quickly. You see how effective that was. And basically vacuum cleaner geniuses, these shark guys. So there's two more screws here. One here, one there. If you haven't got the gist, generally professionals in my industry are not a fan of this brand. Uh, we're not in love with the idea of disposing of a product because a $5 part broke. We're also not in love with the idea of making it very, very, very difficult to even do basic service on the product. So there's one final hidden screw back here left there to frustrate you. And I'm gonna pop that puppy out. Possibly. Maybe pop it out, maybe gonna flip it over, get the snot out of it. Maybe this will get left in the video. Maybe it'll get cut out. You know, here we go. Okay, so now at this point, I can take the lid off and there's headlights right here. And so there's a wire connecting to the printed circuit board. That wire just pulls out, there's no clip on it. And that's the wire that's gonna feed into the headlights. So that's out. One of the side plates also fell off. I'll just set that aside. So what we're going for here is this micro switch right here. And you can see when the machine goes in an upright position, it engages the switch. So engage, the switch is off. It does not feed any power to this assembly down here. When you recline the machine, the switch opens and power is fed to the machine and the brush roller will then spin. That's what the micro switch does. Because there's a lot of debris in here, because these are actually very inefficient vacuum cleaners, they kick up a lot of dirt that kicks around in here. These switches very frequently go bad. So the first thing is you need to test it uh it's it's almost impossible to test your circuit board if your circuit board is bad you might be able to find a used one um, on ebay or something like that it's also almost impossible to test your motor you can't jump the motor because i believe it's down to i think it's a 12 volt no, this is 120 that one's a 120. 
I don't like to jump those motors because I've had them burn up on me. The switch we can test. So I am going to pop out the knuckle here so I can kind of get around in there. And there's one screw right here holding my micro switch in. Now, at this point, I've been into a whole bunch of sharks and they all use slightly different parts. Brush roll motors and PCBs tend to be the same, but everything around them is different. The one thing I have not seen different though is a micro switch. Every shark I've ever taken apart actually has the same stinking micro switch in it. So hopefully that's what you have. I'm gonna go ahead and link a source for these switches um, in the description, a source that I know is good. <laughs> um, and there's one little screw right here holding my micro switch in. I'm gonna pop that out. On the other side, there's a nut on the other side, so we don't wanna lose that. And screw out. And the nut that I just said we don't wanna lose. There we go. Okay, and now my micro switch is off. So I'm gonna test this micro switch. We could have done this while it was in there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna test the micro switch. If the micro switch tests bad, then we know for pos for certain the reason the brush roll is not running is because it's bad. So I'm gonna use a multimeter. You can also just use a continuity tester. That's the setting on my multimeter to test for continuity. I always test to make sure I'm set properly. I am. So this micro switch is actually good. So I'm going to get electrical continuity on this right here and electrical continuity here. And you can hear my multimeter is telling me I do have continuity. What you're gonna to wanna to do is depress the switch, test again, and you should have no continuity when the switch is closed. Open the switch, get continuity, close the switch, no continuity open continuity, close no continuity. That's a good switch. If you get no continuity open and close, your switch is bad and go ahead and replace it. We're gonna go ahead and replace this switch as a demonstration. First things first, I'm gonna cut off this shrink that's right here with a razor blade. Right in the middle here, sorry. This is gonna require, this, uh, this job is gonna require soldering. Uh, there's any number of ways to get around soldering. I, I'm i gonna solder it because that's the best way to do it. I, I mean, there's some clips you can use, stuff like that. I would just invest in a good solder iron because you need one in your house anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice these off. As always, this is a difficult repair. If you don't feel comfortable with it, if you're not uh, if you're not an authorized, I don't know, vacuum tech, don't do it. All right, so I've got my iron heated up. I'm going to go ahead and solder this. Uh, again, this is a complex electrical repair. If you're not comfortable doing it, bring it into an authorized service center and they can do this for you. If you're not comfortable with soldering or not familiar with it, there's lots of soldering videos on YouTube um, that you can watch to get more comfortable with it. I'm going to walk you through this. So I've taken some flux. This is just the regular old flux they sell at Home Depot for, uh, for soldering pipes together. Um, my rule with soldering is more flux, more flux. Did you use more flux? Go ahead and use more flux. Um, so I'm gonna put some flux on there. I'm gonna pause the video to go find safety glasses. Oh, there's safety glasses. <clears throat> All right, I'm back with safety glasses. You definitely want to put safety glasses on for this because we're going to be, this is hook soldering, it's hooked through. We're going to desolder and pull it out. And sometimes you can get little flecks of solder that kind of spit out when you're, when you're pulling that out. So you definitely need to have your safety glasses on as Bill Nye, the sci science guy would say, glasses on. I'm going to clean my tip real quick. And I'm going to apply some heat right here. And hopefully we can get a good flow. Looks like I've got a good bridge. And I'm gonna pull that hook off. I'm gonna keep it hot. Doesn't matter how hot this stays. It doesn't matter if we melt the inside of this switch because it's already bad. All right, so I got one off right there. Ow, that's hot. <laughs> oh, please leave that in the video. And I'm gonna grab the other one. 
heat from the bottom typically is best. Heat rises, see if I get a good bridge there. You can see it flow, it kind of changes color. I'm gonna twist that back while applying heat. And there we go, we got it desoldered. This is a pretty good, this is actually a pretty good desolder right here. It's pretty clean. I don't have a lot of goop on there. If I did and I wanted to remove some of the solder, you can buy wick, which is specifically for this purpose. But if you don't have wick, you can strip some wires, some old wire like this, get a little bit of flux on them. And if you apply heat to your wire and then rub this on here, a lot of the solder will actually wick into this extra wire. And you see how my wire now is a little bit thinner. So it's gonna be a little bit easier to work with after I've removed that solder there. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just wick a little bit off. Oh, wrong side, I didn't have flux on that. And you wanna put flux on your wick. That'll help this entire process. Again, my rule is more solder. You can see how my wick just changed color a little bit because it took on some of the solder from those other wires. And those are good clean wires now. Um, I'm not gonna have any problem getting those soldered on and hooked into the, the new switch, the new micro switch. So the micro switch you receive is most typically gonna actually have three contact points on it. You only need two of those three contact points. Um, I believe you could leave the third contact point on and not have a problem. I typically go ahead and clip them off with a pair of wire cutters just to get it out of the way to some degree. Um, but you're gonna be using these two outside contact points. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I've got some shrink wrap right here, some heat shrink, I'm gonna put it on my wires and I'm gonna push it down well out of the way of my soldering because if my soldering iron gets real hot near it, this shrink will, will melt. And then I'm gonna go ahead uh, and I'm going to install my switch. There's holes on the switch intended for the wires to go through and then hook, you can bend them. <clears throat> See my little hook right there. <coughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and solder. I'm gonna add a little bit of flux on that. Again, the rule, my rule of soldering is more flux. You're always gonna flow easier if you got flux all over the place. You're a little bit smokier, but I'd rather deal with a little bit of smoke than have to redo solder joints over and over. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean my solder tip again. I'll get a little bit of solder on there. Should be pretty good. I'm gonna hold this out and just hold some heat under there, let it flow, pull it off. You don't wanna hold it on too long or else you will, uh, you'll melt the inside of that switch. The heat will go right up that blade and melt the inside of your switch, which you do not want. You can tell the solder flows because everything will change color. It'll get shiny. And then when it has cooled, right there, I've got a good flow. When it has cooled, it will change to a matte color again. You can see that matte color right there. And that's that for the solder. Um, I'm gonna tip my iron, I am done with it. So I'm gonna tip my iron and turn it off. Uh, I'm gonna crush that down a little bit. I had that, I didn't have it crushed down as much as I would have liked. Let me get that out of the way, there we go. And then my my shrink will go right over there and I will use my heat gun. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shrink the, uh, put the shrink on these. I'm gonna do them both at the same time. Put them up on there. So that's done. Now we need to get the switch back into this housing the way that it was before. If I can remember which direction it went. I'll look real quick. It goes like that. Let's see. So one mounting hole right there. And if I remember, I think the wires went up here. And then we had one small screw which goes to a bolt on the opposite side. Right there, in your, in your tin. In the tin. Okay, 
I'm gonna get this clamped down in here. And then there's the one screw that holds all that in, which was the smaller screw. All the other ones I took out were the same size. I don't know how relevant this is because every shark is different. So and when you're working on yours, you'll want to pay attention to the size of the screws that you're taking out because many sharks use multiple different types of screws. And it's important <clears throat> to use the right length. <clears throat> Otherwise you could potentially push through. Okay, so now I'm going to get this thing set back in here. Note to those of you who are considering replacing this hose on your shark, it's a pain in the butt. All right, so that all is set safely out of the way now. And if we look, when this goes up, it will depress that switch. When it comes back, it will undepress that switch. Okay. So remember that we had uh, our one side plate here fell off when we took it apart. I'm gonna put that back in again. And then also remember that we have this one wire that goes to the light. So we'll need to plug that wire in down here and then drop the top cover back directly onto the top. And that's good and tight. We're gonna hold it while we flip it over and then drop, I'm gonna put the center screw in first so everything is, so nothing shifts on me. <clears throat> screws in. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and put the wheels back in. These just simply pressure fit. Line them up right because you got that felt on the one side, so you got to kind of line it up and then you will press them in. <clears throat> see, my one side isn't quite in yet. You can usually tap them in. There you go and those spin free. All right, and that is that. That is how you replace a shark uh, brush roller micro switch. Thank you for watching.